best way to learn a language is to move to the country that speaks that language. If you've been learning a language for, I don't know, more than a week, you may have been browsing the interwebs for various forums and discussions on how best to learn a language, what is the best strategy, and of course everybody has an opinion regarding this. Even me. Thank you for listening to mine. And one of the most, um, I guess you could say, maybe criminally overused statements is, just move to the country where the language is spoken then you'll become an expert. While this uh, advice comes from a place of truth and a place of um, well-intended advice, I'm somebody who's been living in Turkey uh, for just about a year now, and um, they speak Turkish in Turkey. Some people speak English. From my experience, I think most people here, or let's say maybe 50%, are monolingual. Uh, and if they are bilingual, it might not be in English first. They may be bilingual in Arabic or Russian, and then maybe English after that. This is just based on my experiences, of course. So I wanted to discuss um, this advice that is applied in a blanket statement. And this is where I'm trying to get at. Yes, moving to a country is very beneficial for your language learning. However, it isn't just a blanket statement, and it's not a fix-all solution. There are very few, if any, fix-all solutions when it comes to language learning. Perhaps the only advice that really works is find something that works for you and keep doing it. Everything else, like just move to the country, just listen to movies, just read books, just speak, comes with a caveat or comes with a necessary um, learner's guide, how to use manual, they're not necessarily blanket statements that can just be applied and give results just like that. And I'd like to discuss how and why. The most important point that I would like to cover is that when you are moving to another country, firstly, there's a lot of different reasons why one puts themselves in another country. It could be for tourism, it could be to study the language spoken. For example, it could be moving to Turkey to be in touch with Turkish language institutions. Or it could be to work and find an income. And if you are working, that is your main goal, and fluency in the language then becomes secondary, because you need to survive first. What I have noticed is when I am in Turkey, um, my priority is actually on surviving first then learning Turkish. What that means is the things that I learn and the way that I speak may not necessarily be the most academic or the best version of the language. I might use a mix of English, I might use a lot of hand gestures, and I might say words in the wrong context or I will say the words in the wrong context. However, the focus is more on me just getting a message across, just being understood, and just understanding enough to make sure that I'm buying the right thing, going in the right direction, doing the right thing. Moving to a country does not necessarily mean fluency in a language. Take my example. Take examples of migrants in any uh, English-speaking country. Their main uh, priority is the survival of themselves and their families. So they will create networks um, where they can survive and not necessarily use the language of the land, which is why you find a lot of first-generation migrants uh, speak the language of the land badly, poorly, not at all, or not well, let's say. So it's perfectly viable even in a place like Turkey, to get by without learning the language. And if you're not dedicated enough, or you have too many other things going on, like living, like trying to find a job and trying to work, um, you may not put in the effort to speak the language every day, and you may just rely on surviving. So that's there's nothing wrong with that, and I think it's a very real uh, life situation that a lot of people go through is they actually just 
need enough of a language to get by. And the fact that we now have like electronic translators and Google Translate, it means that oftentimes you may not really need to even learn the language to converse with people because I've had experiences, people will just kind of speak what they want in the telephone and then it'll translate from Turkish to English to me. It may not always work, but it's often better than the conversation we would have had speaking English or Turkish without an online translator. I feel like maybe there's an assumption that you can just go to a country and um, speak what you would call baby level language or Tarzan speak, uh, like, you know, Ben, uh, Yemek, Istior, or Istmek, or something, or Sevmek, I like food. I, uh, you know, um, these very basic sentences that may not necessarily be uh, correct. And like I said, yes, you can survive on that, but you will not necessarily be able to have very meaningful conversations with people um, unless you're at a certain level. Of course, if you find people who are willing to listen to you um, and speak with you at your level, that's great, um, but it may not last for very long because it's quite draining. I remember I had a very good conversation when I was at an A1 level, and my level is still very low. I'm still very slow at speaking, but I was speaking to this old man, and we were speaking very slowly, very like you know, uh, very short sentences, and we learned a lot about each other. We learned a lot about ourselves. Um, but even that, after about ten or twenty minutes, we did start to. Um, utilize a online translator uh, so like yes you can actually have quite good conversations with people at a lower level but I would say the stuff that you can talk about and even the opportunities to speak with people may not always be there because um, not everybody has time to slow down and and wait for you to find the right verb and wait for you to remember in Turkish. Oh man, hold on, the verb got to go at the back. I have to say the base verb, then I got to negate it, and then I got to put the personal pronoun at the end. There's a lot going on. And unless you are already sort of at a stage where you can fluently put the pieces together in your head um, without thinking about it so much, things might be a bit difficult communication wise. I have felt that here. Not everybody. Like, for example, at the bank, at the supermarket, in service industries, not everyone's really willing to help you all the time. Uh, I had a very nice guy who worked at the career courier uh, service, and he came to my house, and, and I spoke very bad Turkish, but he helped me get my parcel delivered. He's like, no worries, buddy. It's okay. I got you. Uh, then I went a second time, and he was serving another customer and I got sent to another person who was actually younger and I thought that maybe that person would be able to help me more because we could relate or uh, maybe they had a better understanding of English but no that person didn't want to help me didn't have time for me to remember any of my verbs my words rather what I'm trying to say is not everybody will give you the chance to express yourself if you're just clutching at words all the time. This is obviously different if you're going to the country for the purpose of language learning because you may have teachers or language partners who will do this job for you and it is sort of a job. Remember that. It's not something that everybody wants to do free all the time. So that's something very important to consider if you want to move to a another country to learn and practice the language is you need to up your level to a point where you can actually have a conversation and contribute meaningfully to that conversation in that language. And it brings me to my last point, which is the classic point of uh, language learning. It's comprehensible input. If you are A1 or A2, potentially most of the dialogue and things that you hear on the street in your target language's country is not going to be comprehensible to you, I feel. Now, at my level, I am able to uh, order food, I can function in the supermarket pretty well, and even on the very first day, there was some stuff at markets and at the airport that I was able to do and get done. But there's a lot of things that are still not comprehensible to you, and so you have to ask yourself and question the efficiency of such a plan if you are going to a country to learn the language. Do you have a level that's high enough to make daily conversation comprehensible input?
If not, you might need to improve on that first. Um, you might be at a stage where it is just incomprehensible enough that you actually take that as motivation and go, oh man, I need to up my game a lot. Uh, but it can also be extremely demotivating when you cannot understand anything here either. In-country placements and in-country in immersion is actually a very, very beneficial thing for your language learning. I feel that living in Turkey for one year, you know, a lot of the time, I will try to find the easier way out. Like I said, I'll just try to use my survival instincts, my survival Turkish, rather than improving on my Turkish. However, I still feel that now um, I understand a lot about what people are saying to me. It's not like they're speaking at me, it's they're speaking to me now. And even though I can't always respond, the messages seem to be getting in, seem to be sticking a bit better. It is quite a stressful experience though, um, because you're always thinking like, oh, why can't I understand? Why can't I do this? Why can't I do that? Even though I can say that my Turkish has improved because of being in immersed in the language's environment for a whole year, if I didn't have to be here already, I would have waited a little bit. The more ideal thing would be to wait till you're a higher level before you move. Of course, if you need to go for work or other reasons, then there's not much help for you there. I had a very good experience with an in-country immersion program that I did with Arabic a while ago. The whole year I studied Arabic and then at the end of the year I did a two-month placement in Oman and that was uh, five or six days a week, class hours, so maybe four or five hours, a mix of writing, speaking, all this kind of stuff, presenting, reading, listening, and at the very end, I felt that I had reached maybe a high beginner or just tipping into the intermediate level. I really felt confident speaking to people on the street, and um, by the end of that two-month period, it was really nice to consolidate all the effort that I did in a year with this two-month program. So, do not just think that moving to a country, like any other recommendation or technique, is going to solve your issues. If you are making a plan, if you're saying that if I get to this level, I'll reward myself or I'll challenge myself by then moving to the country or taking a one month holiday there or something, that's a much better strategy. In-country immersion is a great technique, but you need to have a plan and it needs to be part of a wider scope of um, language learning and not just what you might think is a golden ticket to becoming fluent. Thank you very much. Let me know what you think about in-country immersion. How has it benefited you or where would you like to go and do it? I am so excited to hear about your opinions. Thanks very much.